Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and today we're going to talk about how to build and deploy a commerce scale unit package. Uh, okay, what is a commerce scale unit package? Let's back up a second. So if you have Microsoft Dynamics 365 uh, for finance and operations, or you're using Microsoft Dynamics 365 for commerce, uh, you are going to have what's called a retail server website. Um, that website contains base Microsoft code and potentially customizations uh, for all the business logic for your commerce applications. So you might have an e-commerce website that talks to this retail server uh, website or you have a point of sale system that's gonna to talk to this retail server website. That retail server website can be deployed in a couple different ways. It can be deployed on a local store server machine, um, but now more and more common, it is stored in what's called the commerce um, cloud scale unit. Uh, and that's just a machine hosted up in LCS that contains the retail uh, server code that allows that machine to be accessible by a bunch of different uh, point of sale applications. It allows you to have easier maintenance because it's just all in one place. You can have a more powerful machine uh, running uh, that code as well as you know a full version of a SQL server. So a lot of reasons to have all that functionality up in a commerce um, cloud scale unit or a cloud scale unit. Um, so in the past, in order to update this retail server code, we had to generate a retail deployable package. We then would apply that package to an LCS environment and then further to the commerce scale unit um, environment as well in LCS. Well, Microsoft's made some really exciting changes more recently, um, specifically starting with version 10.0.16, um, and that allows us to uh, build the retail server extensions functionality um, by itself, independently of the retail SDK and without the need of deploying a full uh, retail deployable package, which is a combination of both the Microsoft DLLs and um, your customizations. So now we can just deploy uh, developers customizations by itself and deploy that package um, even independently just to the commerce scale units. So I realized that was uh, probably pretty confusing, but uh, let's get into it and hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense. First thing we need to do is we need to go to GitHub. So specifically this URL, I can post this uh, in the comments. Um, but you go to this URL, Microsoft has now deployed this scale unit solution project that we can use to generate what's called a commerce scale unit package. Um, and that's new as opposed to the retail deployable package that you're used to. So first of all, you download this uh, solution and unzip it. If I scroll a little further down in the readme, I can see that I'm pointing to version or release version of this scale unit package um, 9.26. That is going to relate to 10.0.16. As time goes on, you may need to point to a newer version of this scale unit solution. Um, all right, let's take a look at what that solution looks like. I've already opened it in Visual Studio. The other kind of benefit here is you can just download this on your local machine. You no longer need to have a cloud hosted development environment um, to get the retail SDK and, and build this functionality. You can just do this using this standalone solution. All right, so this solution only has three projects, channel database, commerce runtime and scale unit. Let's take a quick moment to just kind of explain um, how you would use each one of these if you've got customizations. The channel database is now where we put any SQL scripts that we need to run against the channel database to upgrade it. It used to be that you would put um, these SQL files in a specific folder in the retail SDK and those would be built uh, together as part of your retail deployable package, you'd have to apply that to an environment to get these SQL scripts to run. Now you just put these SQL scripts here. You don't need them to, to add them to any other config file. Um, these SQL scripts, I won't go into too much detail, um, but again, these SQL scripts are gonna run against the channel database that's on your commerce scale unit. 
Um, and there's a few things you want to pay attention to. Um, one, you want to write all your scripts that in a way that this script could be run multiple times safely without running into an error. So usually what that means is you want to check if an object exists before you try to create it. Because if you try to run a create table script and that table already exists, it's going to throw an error and, and kind of stop the whole uh, package from applying. So we want to you know, write these uh, very thread safe. Another thing is we want to follow our, all the best practices for extensions of the channel database. And mostly what that means is using this EXT schema. This makes sure that any custom objects you're creating um, won't have the full same name as any Microsoft objects because Microsoft's going to use the AX.schema or the CRT.schema or, or even the DBO.schema. Um, and then lastly, I'll point out, uh, you want to make sure that if you're creating new tables that you have the correct permissions um, set on those tables. But that may be a whole other article on um, how to sync data to channel database tables. So if you've got multiple scripts, go ahead and add them here. If you've already deployed a script to a commerce scale unit um, and that's out in another environment, make sure you're creating new files with new names because what happens is when you apply this package to a commerce scale unit, it keeps, LCS keeps track of what scripts you've already run um, and it will not run the same scripts with the same name. So if you've since made a new change that has never been deployed before, go ahead and create a new name of your SQL file and put that change in there. If you need to add additional columns to a table, use an add column script um, rather than dropping the entire table and, and recreating it. Okay, so that's channel database. The next important project is this one called Commerce Runtime. All of the customizations that you used to have in maybe a custom uh, retail server uh, solution now get migrated to here. It used to be that every time there was a new Microsoft version, you would need to come into your retail server project and update all the file paths to the Microsoft DLLs, and there were a lot of them, and they would get uh, deployed into a new file path in the references folder of your retail SDK. Uh, now uh, it's much, much easier. We just naturally have this one NuGet package um, that contains most of the DLLs we should ever need um, for the uh, retail server and for this commerce runtime. Um, so that's really phenomenal. You, and because it is a NuGet package, it does mean that we can actually just change um, the version by right-clicking on dependencies, selecting manage NuGet package, and then we can actually look at our different versions and change it to an even newer version if we need to. Um, all right, I think those might be under updates actually. So um, after we've done that, uh, we can actually add all our code um, as either controllers, entities, request handlers, or triggers. So in the uh, GitHub um, package here, we've got a couple samples of a bound controller and an unbound controller. You can just follow this example um, to add your own code in here. And then lastly, the third project we've got is this scale unit project. This scale unit project really doesn't have anything in it. It has this NuGet package, which is pointing to a version number as well. And note that this 9.26 um, you know, relates to an application version, and you can see that relation in the readme file on GitHub. We looked at that earlier. Um, but this package or this project shouldn't be changed. We can just leave this alone. This project is responsible for building the package. So all we have to do to build the package is actually just build our solution. Once we've built it, I've already built it, we can rebuild it. Um, I can just right click on our solution and say open folder in File Explorer. This takes me to the folder um, that I've downloaded the solution. So I'll pull that over here. I've got mine checked into a source control. And then inside of here, I can go into this scale unit folder. I can go into the bin folder, the debug folder, 
and then the not, uh, net standard 2.0 folder. And this is where my cloud scale unit has been built um, and zipped. And so essentially what this cloud scale unit extension package is, is it has put our SQL scripts into these folders. You don't have to follow me here, but if we had our own SQL scripts instead of the example one, they'd be in here. And then if we've got code, they get built into a commerce uh, runtime DLL uh, right here. And then we've also got a config file that is gonna reference um, this DLL. So before we'd have to um, kind of make this change uh, in the retail SDK, now this is done all for us. And the benefit here is both those that SQL script and these DLLs are gonna get deployed all for us. So if I come back here, this is the zip file. This is our commerce scale unit package. So we built our commerce scale unit package. The next step is we want to upload it to LCS and actually apply it. So let's look at that. Um, if I minimize these, um, I can look at LCS here. Um, so in LCS, we log into lcs.dynamics.com, sign in. We go to the project that we wanna look at. We click on these three lines and go to asset library. And then once we're in the asset library, we're gonna go to the Commerce Cloud Scale Unit Extension tab. This is kind of a new tab that we're gonna make use of. It used to be that we would put our retail deployable package with all this in the software deployable packages tab. Now we don't do that. We go into the Commerce Cloud Scale Unit tab and we add our files there. So we can click the plus button, same way, um, give it a name, um, and then click add file. And we're really gonna pick that zip file that you just saw that's in our, our folder here. So this zip file we will add to our Commerce Cloud Scale Unit tab. Um, next, after that, um, that, that's uploading it. Now we actually want to apply this Commerce Scale Unit package. We can't apply this Commerce Scale Unit to a dev environment um, it, because the dev environment doesn't have any uh, Commerce Scale Units attached to it. But if it's a test environment or stage or prod, it's going to have a um, Commerce Scale Unit uh, machines attached to that environment. So it's really a, a machine running on the Microsoft tenancy. Um, those are ones we can deploy to. So let's take a look at that. I've actually just uh, taken the screenshots in Word here. So if we go to the full details page of say our test environment, we, um, normally, you know, to apply an X++ package, you would go to maintain and say apply package. In this case, we're not actually changing anything about the uh, D365 FNO environment at all, which is great. So we don't have to bring that environment down like we did before. Um, now we actually look under environment features and next to the word commerce is the link manage we click on manage, it's going to show us a page that looks like this. This is showing us the commerce scale units that are attached to this machine. They're, they're running on a separate server with, you know, kind of separate components. Um, but in LCS, they're related to this machine um, for syncing data purposes, etc. So we see these by clicking the manage link on the full details page. Once we're on this deployment and setup screen, we can see how many commerce scale units we have. This allows us to scale out um, our functionality. If we have a lot of stores and a lot of registers or um, you know, a website that deals with a lot of channels, we can have as many commerce scale units as we want. I think the typical I see in a test environment is you'll see these two uh, scale units. Uh, once you select one, you click on you know this tab, if you will, on the left-hand side. Um, you'll get these details and links. Um, specifically, what we want to do is we want to click on the update extension link. That'll give you a little drop down, and you'll be able to select your commerce scale unit package that you just uploaded to the asset library and click open. OK to apply that Commerce Scale Unit package. Again, what it's going to do is it's going to run 
the SQL script against the channel database that's on this machine to add you know, whatever tables, fields, store procedures, or views that you've put into those SQL scripts. Um, and it's also going to drop uh, any custom, that custom DLL, the commerce runtime, and any related DLLs into the retail server website's uh, bin ext folder. I'll show you that in a second. Um, you then, after you click apply, it should run decently quickly. I think usually it's done in about 15 minutes or so um, because it, it's really not doing a whole lot. Um, and then you can click, or even before it's done, you can click on your second commerce scale unit and click update extension and do the same thing. Um, that way both of them are updated. Well, before we look at that last piece, I wanted to point out there's this update button as well. This update button is for applying base Microsoft DLLs. So now it truly is an extension model where the two are separate. The update button is updating base Microsoft DLLs. So as they release new hotfixes and features, you can use this button to update their DLLs. And then if and when a developer is making, uh, adding new features uh, from their side, they use the update extension DLL. Um, in theory, those could be a, a separate versions um, and the extension model should make it so that they're gonna work together. And that's just really, really powerful that we no longer have to deploy both of those DLLs on the same version and get them in sync before we deploy them. It still may be a best practice to um, update your extensions using the latest references to base Microsoft DLL and kind of keep them in sync. But now it's much easier. We're not having to merge all of the retail SDK files in our source control branch. Um, they have now been kind of separated for the purposes of applying this retail server logic. Um, so if I go back and look at a cloud hosted environment here, um, I just wanted to point out what's happening when we apply. If I open IIS manager, I can see the retail server website. This is really what's being hosted in the commerce scale unit. If I select explore, it'll take me to the web root folder. I can go into the bin folder. In the bin folder, here's all of the base Microsoft DLLs. These are what are getting updated when we click that update button um, and selecting a new version of Microsoft's code. Um, but then if we as developers have extensions, it's going into this ext folder. And so here you can see we have a commerce runtime DLL and our commerce runtime ext um, uh, config file also gets deployed and it's really just going to reference our commerce runtime DLL and then any additional references that you might have as you built out that project. Um, so that's really it. Uh, again, it's really exciting that we now have a much easier way to deploy retail server extensions independent of the retail SDK. We don't even have to have a, a cloud hosted dev environment. Um, it really kind of uses the extension model that Microsoft created for commerce. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I know that was a lot to cover, but thanks so much for watching.